When it comes to tanks that are misunderstood, the M1 Abrams is definitely up there. It certainly isn't underrated, probably the opposite in fact, but at a glance some of its design decisions don't make a whole lot of sense. For instance, its use of a gas turbine engine instead of a more economical diesel engine, or that it uses depleted uranium for both its ammunition and armor. To someone that doesn't have an unhealthy obsession with armored fighting vehicles, the latter may sound a bit alarming. The thought of some Fallout-esque vehicle that spews radiation after taking a hit comes to mind, but that isn't entirely accurate. There are already ecological concerns about firing lead ammunition from small arms, so why is the United States using uranium of all elements for tank rounds? Since I already made a video explaining why the Abrams uses a turbine engine, I figured I could make one explaining why it uses depleted uranium for both offense and defense. Keep in mind I'm not endorsing its use, I'm just explaining the thought process behind it. One of the main draws of depleted uranium is that it's very cheap. In fact, it's a byproduct of uranium enrichment, a process used to create uranium-235, which fuels nuclear reactors. Uranium is also fairly common, having an average concentration in the Earth's crust of 2.8 parts per million. Compare this to tungsten, which is also used for tank ammunition. Tungsten sits at 1.5 parts per million. Depleted uranium's commonness and low cost make it ideal for tank ammunition, even before you get into its penetrative qualities. The main reason depleted uranium is used is because it's very dense. At around 19.05 grams per cubic centimeter, it's only slightly less dense than tungsten. When creating ammo or armor, high-density materials are ideal, but density isn't the only factor that has to be taken into account. Depleted uranium's high hardness also makes it a good material for armor. On its own, depleted uranium wouldn't make for a good armor play since it's brittle. That's why it's just one element in the M1's composite armor array. When it comes to ammunition, you want as much kinetic energy being put onto a target as possible. You do this in two ways. First, by increasing velocity. Second, by increasing mass. It goes without saying that if you want more mass for a specific volume, you want a denser material. Steel was usually the go-to material for anti-tank ammunition, but as tank armor became thicker, tungsten took over. Tungsten was delivered by two main methods, armor-piercing composite rigid, or APCR, and armor-piercing discarding Sabo, or APDS. The US used tungsten up until 1980, when the 105mm round M774s first fielded. It was the first US round to use depleted uranium, and greatly increased the performance of the 105. Several years later, it was replaced by M833, and the US has been using depleted uranium ever since. Depleted uranium is generally better than tungsten as a penetrator because it adiabatically shears, a process better known as self-sharpening. When a projectile pierces armor, it starts to deform as it pushes forward, a process called mushrooming. Due to a number of properties, depleted uranium is better at shedding these deformities, helping it keep its original shape. In order to reach similar levels of penetration, tungsten has to be fired at higher velocities, where it doesn't mushroom quite as much. Due to the fact it's pyrophoric, depleted uranium is said to do more damage, but from what I can tell, this effect is negligible at best. The most damage is going to come from spall in the penetrator itself. Okay, so now we know why depleted uranium is used over other materials, but what about the ecological and medical effects mentioned earlier? Just how dangerous is depleted uranium? Probably not as dangerous as you think, but it's not exactly something you want to be around either. It's a common misconception that depleted uranium will give you cancer. DU is actually less radioactive than natural uranium, by about 40%. Not only that, but it mostly gives off alpha particles, which can't penetrate the skin. Even people with DU fragments embedded in their body have yet to report the development of cancer. The problem with DU starts when you ingest it. Uranium is toxic, which means that if someone ingests uranium particulates, it can have severe effects. The kidneys in particular are affected, with high concentrations of uranium in the blood eventually resulting in kidney failure. Of course, I wouldn't suggest inhaling any kind of heavy metal. Tungsten is also highly poisonous, so you don't want to be breathing in either of them. You're at a higher risk of being poisoned with DU, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Even though it isn't super radioactive, that doesn't mean it can't affect the surrounding area. These particles can still get into drinking water or food. So the takeaway is that while depleted uranium isn't as dangerous as people think, it's still dangerous. The US military doesn't care if it damages the surrounding environment. If it gives enhanced performance, they'll take it. That's a pretty grim note to leave off on, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. As always, I'll see you on the next one.